Hey guys, it's Marta. The wreath is on the door. And when the wreath is on the door, I felt like it's time to change something in my pots today. I'll be making new pots decorations. I will be trying to merge some of the summer flowers and some of the fall ones. And I hope you will join. Let's go. Guys, please tell me how is the weather uh, in your country in September. In Poland, we've had so far the best September I can remember. We are having summer temperatures, very warm evenings, beautiful weather. This, even the air is, is more crisp than in the summer. It was very, very hot. So now it's so beautiful. You can walk, you can work in the garden. It's amazing. So what I will be putting in my pots now, uh, first, is the pink bell heather. This plant is one of my favorite autumn plants to put in my pots. Uh, I love it. I love it more than the normal heathers that uh, we get because the flowers are more beautiful. This plant comes from the south of Africa and is very uh, tender so it, we can't overwinter it in my uh, in my climate so I'm treating it as annuals and I just put them in the pots and I enjoy them until the end of the fall uh, they are uh, liking they are liking the um, conditions same as heather so they really like aricaceous soil they like the soil to be well drained if you live in a warmer uh, country and you have aricaceous uh, soil I think this plant would be wonderful for your borders but in our country because we get minus 15 minus 20 in the winter it's impossible to overwinter it you can try if you live in a similar uh, climate as me you can try to overwinter it if you have a space that is cold and very bright and humid in the winter something between 5 and 10 degrees celsius uh, you can try to overwinter it overwinter it but you have to be very diligent with watering not to overwater but never to leave it to dry out then it will be very happy and you will get great results with overwintering but i treat it as an annual and i just get three months of these beautiful blooms in the pots this plant is also a tender uh, heather but i loved the color uh, whenever i go to the gardening center uh, i shop with my eye because uh, i was looking for something to be matched with the wreath. The wreath is lime green, so I thought uh, the main theme of, the, uh, of these pots should be lime and pink. So when I walk with my favorite plant, so this one, I'm searching for colors that will match it. And look at this, the lime green and the pink are going so well together. So, and this one will also give me some interest in the height, the interesting type of leaves. I really like it. I also bought a typical heather but this one is definitely darker and I really like when I get different hues of the same color so we have different hues of green but they will be uh, complementing each other they will be this dark green will make this lime green pop even more when I'm working with plants like that so they have an upright growth they have needle like leaves they are very stiff I'm searching for something to make it more calm. So I will look for different shapes, uh, different texture of the leaves. And look, they are so different. They have something in common. The color uh, is what they have in common, but the texture and the leaves are completely different. And I really like making those <laughs> like opposites attract and they look so much better together than uh, without, without each other. So I think they are the perfect couple. And this will also be on the edge of the pot. And by this, I mean my hukera, 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 how do you say it uh, in your countries? So this is one of my favorite perennials. Uh, hukera is, uh, is a plant that is very difficult to kill. I've had one uh, type of hukera living under a pine tree uh, in a very dry condition. There was no watering, hardly ever any water came. There was this one guy who was building our gardener's shed and he dug them up, threw them on the pile and left them for the winter. And I, I missed that somehow. 
I came back in the spring and they were alive. And they are still growing there because I, re I replanted them and they are still very happy and growing there. So, so uh, I once made a video about the most resilient perennials and this one is one of them. Really beautiful plant, grows well in the shade, grows well in the sun. It's very, very forgiving if you don't give it water. Of course, if it, if it gets enough water, it gets more sun, it will be very, very robust. So, and I love using them in the pots. Uh, I use them in the pots, then I repot them and I plant them somewhere in the garden. And it's one of the best plants you can have in your garden. And the lime green colors are my favorite ones. They usually have lime in the beginning of their names. Okay, what about the soil for the pots? Uh, I think it's best to use the arocational soil that is meant for uh, either headers or rhododendrons or hydrangeas. This will be the perfect one. And if you buy this kind of mix, it will be well drained. It will be light, so it will be good for those plants. What they like is constant moisture, but never having their feet in the water. So that, that is good to remember. Remember that your pots have a drainage hole. Uh, you can put some kind of, uh, I don't know, even gravel if the pot has very tiny uh, hole. But I, uh, I really like to use light soil, big drainage hole, and they are very, very happy. And I'm consistent with watering, not too much, but they have to be moist all the time, never super wet. Okay, it's time to plant, let's go. Whenever I'm planting uh, something in my pots, I usually take my pots and I put them in the bigger pot. I want to see if this composition is right because I have something in my head, but it doesn't always work. So when I put them, I see if the spaces between them are fine. I like them packed for the fall because this is like a very short term uh, composition and I want it to look very, very full. So I put them in their containers. I check if I like the composition, if I like the colors, if I like the spacing and if it's fine, then I I will take one by one, I will take it out of its pot, I will loosen the roots so uh, they will have uh, easier to, pu to put them into the soil. Then I just squeeze tight lightly so there is no air pockets and then I will water them. With watering headers, please be very, very careful not to put water on the flowers. They will become brown and ugly and you, know, you don't want to do that. Put your hose between the plants and water them below uh, below the flowers it will definitely be better for them uh, when I water I water truly I want the soil to be more compact not super compact but there is no air pockets and this is how I leave it now it's just time to plant so let's go Now it's time to clean my mess. I always do so much uh, of the mess around the pots, but this is a great time to clean the entry of our house. And I will also be cleaning my supertunias. Uh, they are standing in front of me. I will show you how they look like. They are not looking bad, especially that this is the end of September. I've trimmed them uh, somewhere around uh, half of the summer, I think uh, July. Uh, so I trimmed the 
down part of the supertunia. I just went with the scissors, nothing, uh, no special place. I just made them shorter. When you cut the lower part of the supertunia, the upper growth appears and this is what we want. Sometimes you will have like uh, a nest here and you want them fuller on the top. So if your supertunias are looking a bit, you know, bad, it's a good idea to trim them even hard and then you will get a second flush of blooms. If you're having problems with pests, this is now is the time when de definitely you will see some green fly or white fly on them. It's good to spray them and I use organic sprays and they are managing those pests really, really good. So there is no need for something heavy. And the trimming, the, uh, the pest uh, thing that you do and then fertilizing them will probably give you flowers for another two maybe even three months depending on when your frost date uh, comes we have no idea what this year will bring if this year will be so warm we might go into november we once had a year that we did not have the freezing temperatures until december so hopefully i'm crossing my fingers for that so the trimming uh, i will do today and then we'll have a beautiful display on the front way i forgot to mention the, the moment when you're buying your plants, please check if they look well. First of all, I check the foliage, I check the f uh, flowers. It's better, always better to buy your flowers when they are in a bud because you will extend the moment of flowering in your garden. When you're going to a garden center and you see a beautifully blooming plant, you don't know how long it's been blooming. And most plants bloom for three weeks. And we want those three weeks to be in our gardens, not in the garden center. So it's always better to buy the plants in a bud. Uh, sometimes you can only have the beautiful bloom blooming ones. So then please check if there are no uh, flowers that are spent. If they are browning, you know that the flowering period is coming to an end and you don't want that in your garden too. I also always check if the plants are well watered. Uh, when I come to a garden center, I check if the soil is moist. If it's very, very dry, I know this is not a good garden center. So this is also important when you're bringing your plants and they are on the drier side, it's always good to put them in a tub or like like this, this type of thing and I water them from below. Uh, it's always better, especially with heathers, you don't want to put water on their flowers or leaves. Uh, so I leave them there for an hour and then they are sufficiently watered. Uh, I always prefer to plant my plants right away. When I come from the garden center, they are well watered there and I put them in the ground or in the pots. It's always better. But if you're like me and sometimes you don't have the time, you have to put your flowers somewhere, put them when you can see them so you don't forget about them. And always remember to put them in some kind of uh, a tray, a deep tray where you can put some of the water, let them water for an hour, then remove the water and leave them there and put them in a place that you remember. I've made the mistake of leaving my plants somewhere in the back of my garden. And after a few days, I was like, oh no, I killed them again. So let me know if you've done that in your life. Of course, everyone, uh, everyone I think has one plant on their kill list. Let me know in the comments. Let me know what are your plans for the fall. Are you making your pots for the for fall or are you in the summer vibe still? please let me know what are the colors you're looking for. What is your typical fall decorations? Are you using mums or maybe sedums? Are you using heathers? What is typical in your country? I always like to know what are those. And if you like today's video, please give it a thumbs up, consider subscribing and we'll see you in the next one. Bye.